everybody, back out bullion here. Should you or should you not touch your gold and silver with your bare hands? It's a bugbear for a lot of people out there and I know whenever I do a video and I'm touching silver with my bare hands like this that inevitably I will get a couple of people commenting saying you're ruining your silver, you're destroying your silver, you're making it worthless. Well, that's not necessarily 100% true and today we want to talk just generally about the uh, pros and cons of touching silver and feeling silver and gold and actually being able to know what it feels like because there's definitely benefits to be had for understanding how silver feels in the hand but at the same time there's also a lot of negatives that can happen from touching your silver and from touching your gold and there are certain things that you should and should not do with uh, certainly some of the more premium items like you see on the table here but there are a lot of items in this world that it's perfectly fine to touch with your bare hands and almost I would recommend you do so to familiarize yourself with how they feel. Now today's video is just a collection of my own thoughts and opinions. It's not financial advice. I am not here to tell you what you should or should not do. And if you do want to go and start fondling any of your silver, then please understand that that's your own personal decision uh, and it should not be uh, taken as granted that that's what you should do having watched this video. So with all of those disclaimers there, uh, let's just talk about touching silver right at the start with your bare hands. Is it okay to do? Yes, there's nothing wrong with touching silver with your bare hands. You're not going to destroy the silver. You're not going to detract from its metallic wealth and value. All that you will be doing is you will be detracting from the numismatic potential value that comes from it being a coin or a collectible or whatever it might be. That is the prime fundamental thing here. You can touch any of these things with your bare hands. It will not destroy it, will not degrade it. It might well cause issues on it that will not look very pleasant, like uh, you know, fingerprints, oil marks, scratches, dents, horrible things like that. And that is all what contributes to these things not being so valuable at the other end of the market when you are looking to potentially sell them. Now, for a lot of people, that's not really a problem because a lot of people will sit there and say, I'm never going to sell my silver. I'm never going to sell my gold. So what difference does it make in that sense? You can pick up even the most collectible of numismatics. If that's not what you're worried about, then fine. But, you know, in those situations, do have a think about, you know, worst case scenarios, what you might have to do, what you might have to sell if the brown stuff hit the fan. OK, granted, in a real kind of cataclysmic scenario, probably not going to be bartering with high end proof coins and numismatics. But, you know, at the same time, it's worth thinking about what's going to happen to these things, perhaps after you're you know, dead and gone, if you are handing this down to family if it's a collectible coin and it's something that increases in value and you've got some grubby, horrible fingerprints all over them, then, you know, that's just not so good. Now, prime examples of things which I would not touch with bare hands are things like the Queen's Beasts, certainly these one ounce gold versions. These are really, really holding nice premiums and those premiums are what you want to cash in on. Now, this whole premise here of cashing in on premiums and whether or not you should touch coins and potentially damage the premiums like we have done for these is all boiling down to what your exit strategy is and what your purpose for buying the silver and gold is in the first place. If you want to enjoy your gold, your silver, if you want to learn about your gold and your silver uh, and by physical touch, by having a look at them, by getting them up close, to, uh, to you and seeing them, then I would probably recommend that you don't look to buy these premium coins because keeping them in perfect condition is really, really important. Now I've got a pretty sad uh, thing here. I got out my one ounce Queen's Beast Lion to have a look. Now I do happen to have two of these, which is rather fortunate. And this is one of the reasons why I do like to buy two of everything because the one that was in this nice capsule, I got out and oh, yeah, we have fallen victim to what looks like impetigo almost on this coin. It's copper spotting. Now, this is not anything to suggest that the coin is not real or fake, but at the same time, it's just been sat in a capsule all this time. In fact, I've used this coin on a few different videos in the past and not seen or noticed any of these marks appearing. And then today, glaring back at me in my face were all of these red copper spot marks. So that's an interesting uh, situation. You know, you can, do, you can do everything right, I guess is what I'm trying to say. You can uh, ensure to the best of your ability that the coin is kept perfect. And on the other side of this line, unfortunately, there are a couple of other spots. You can see one here just above the L. And I think there's one appearing just on the main there of the, of the line. So those type of things will categorically ruin 
uh, your premiums. Now, I do believe that the copper spotting can be removed by conservation, but it is pretty expensive. You'd almost have to send it in for kind of coin grading with NGC or PCGS and have them, uh, you know, sort of basically conserve the coin and uh, get rid of those copper spots. So it's not sort of the end of the world in that sense, and some might argue that it would probably be worthwhile doing just to uh, increase the premium back on this coin but ultimately it's a real sad thing to happen and that sometimes can happen so you can be as careful as you can be you can look at these coins and uh, be absolutely 100 percent hands off but something will happen and that can be the very same for silver as well and uh, it's usually more common in what's called milk spotting rather than uh, you know sort of any fingerprints I mean there can be latent fingerprints which will show up from uh, you know dealers or whatever that have touched the coins and then sent them on to you but often you'll see those when they arrive uh, but yeah milk spotting can happen uh, these are the 10 ounce Queen's Beasters now there's some scratches on the capsules here there's also some damage on this capsule here Capsules are a really good way of protecting your coins. They're a good way of being able to enjoy them, hold them, see them without obviously touching the silver and actually damaging it. So that's definitely something to think about. Uh, and, you know, as I said, you can do everything right and yet there still will be horrible milk spots on some of these coins. Pretty fortunate, I feel, that on these particular Queen's Beast Lions and Griffins that there isn't really any damage there. And the capsules, as, I can, as you can see, are doing their job protecting the coins. Even if you do have a graded silver coin and potentially graded gold coin, you can get these copper spots occurring later on, the milk spots occurring later on. Grading is a, basically another way of protecting the coin and encapsulating it. So these capsules are what are supplied from the raw mint. These particular capsules are second-hand market capsules and often the, well, in fact, all of the one ounce Queen's Beast coins don't get supplied from the mint and dealers in capsules. So uh, it's definitely, you know, different ways of protecting coins. Grading them, slabbing them is a certainly a way to do it. Uh, this is arguably very protected now. It's got a vacuum seal around it. So in theory, it should be pretty well protected. But as I said, there are certain things that can occur post grading. So what are the benefits of actually touching your silver then? If I'm sort of saying all of this about premium and, uh, you know, touching gold being bad, is there even a point? Is there even an excuse? Why am I touching this 50 pesos gold coin with my bare hands? Well, for one thing, there are a lot of items out there that will never have huge premiums attached to them. Uh, this 50 pesos is one of them. They are not high premium coins at all. They often sell uh, fairly close to spot price and that's the idea of them. And it's all down to your kind of exit strategy as well. If you're buying certain coins and certain uh, silver and gold coins for just their weight in silver and gold, then it really doesn't matter too much uh, if you're going to touch and hold them. Same can be said of this Britannia, uh, yeah, this 2013 Britannia over here. This was a second-hand piece. Now, if I bought this really brand new and it was absolutely perfect condition, then I would not be touching this. But because it was already second-hand, it was already dirt cheap, it already had lots of fingerprints and nasty marks on it, it doesn't make a difference to me and I can enjoy it, I can hold it, I can get to know how it feels as well. Because a lot of the time, that is actually more invaluable than you might think. Certainly, it's probably more applicable to silver. Now, silver is an incredible conductor of heat and you can really feel the silver sapping the heat out of your hand. This, this coin feels incredibly cold, but it warms up really quickly when you have it in your hand. And as soon as you get your hands on a fake silver coin, you'll see the difference, you'll know the difference. And that is something that I learned really early on from uh, having bought some of my own pieces of silver. Now, the last thing to say is that, uh, to reiterate the point that you're not going to damage, you're not going to destroy these coins by holding them with your bare hands. Yes, you could damage and destroy the numismatic value, but remember, gold and silver have been around for 5,000 years. People have been touching gold and silver with bare hands for a long time, and it has not done any irreparable damage to these things. You know, coins are meant for durability. Talking of durability, we will talk a little bit. So there are some so, for example, the uh, the Britannia here, this is fine silver, this is 909 silver, so it's quite susceptible to uh, to dinging and damage. It's pure, it's quite malleable. The same can be said for silver in its 909 form. It is f pretty malleable. In fact, these are simply melter coins, so I can demonstrate that here by going with a quick, sharp hit there, and you can see that I'm already 
dinging and scratching this particular coin. So that is, uh, if we can get the camera to focus, there we go, sorry, the light in winter is awful, it does make the camera pretty hard to focus, but you can see that it's really easy to ding and dent these coins. However, old school coins, old world coins, are made of alloys, and they're often a lot more durable because they were supposed to be in circulation, they were supposed to be rubbing against each other in people's pockets and used in well, I suppose not so much these ones because these are rather large denomination coins, but the, certainly the smaller silver and gold coins were supposed to be used in circulation, so they're a lot more durable. And by holding them, you can uh, enjoy them, feel them, see them up close, and uh, you don't really need to worry too much about their condition because ultimately they're just bullion weight, and that's all that really matters. So that is kind of uh, my rundown. I don't really see a problem in touching your gold and silver in the right circumstances. I think if you are going to have you know, items which will increase in value because of their numismatic value, it's worth considering whether or not you want to essentially destroy that value by opening these and seeing them. Now you can of course take further precautions you can have the proper gloves on, you can have, uh, you know, being in a hermetically sealed room with no dust, because bear in mind, even opening the capsules for these things, it's going to attract dust particles to them, which could, uh, you know, damage them, could potentially ruin some of the uh, premium if it's not perfectly pristine condition. Uh, so there's definitely things to factor in there. But do remember that it is not impossible for things to go wrong, even if you do everything right, as can be seen from this particular one ounce Queen's Beast Lion. So, the last thing I want to ask in this video is anybody experienced anything like this on their Queen's Beasts? And if so, what did you do? How did you rectify it if you did? Or did you just take that hit? Fortunately, this was, I think if I'm looking, I uh, know this was bought uh, off a member of the Silver Forum, so I can't show you uh, the label as I've written some other information on there. But it was uh, a pretty low price when gold was a lot lower. So, uh, you know, in terms of potential loss of premium, there's not a great deal to worry about there. But ultimately, it's still a real shame that we've got some horrible looking uh, cough spots. Looks like Queenie's got impetigo, bless her. So, yeah, there we go. Let me know your thoughts on handling your gold and silver down in the comment section. Uh, it would be really interesting to get your views and opinions on it, and uh, all I ask is that you be respectful of mine and other people's opinions. If you enjoyed today's video, if you enjoyed the presentation of it, then please make sure you hit the thumbs up button and share this around on your social media. That would be very helpful. Otherwise, have a fantastic week ahead. Thank you all for watching, and please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.